Hello, my name is Edward Vital. This video corresponds to our manuscript reporting the pool subgroup analysis of the phase three TULIP-1 and TULIP-2 trials, which both investigated the safety and efficacy of anafrolumab in patients with systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE. Anafrolumab is a monoclonal antibody targeting the type 1 interferon signaling pathway. Anafrolumab is approved in several countries for the treatment of patients with moderate to severe SLE receiving standard therapy. This approval was based on the results of the phase 3 TULIP-1 and TULIP-2 trials in which anafrolumab treatment was associated with clinically meaning meaningful improvements in disease activity across endpoints and was generally well tolerated. The purpose of this analysis was to assess whether the efficacy and safety of anifolumab is generally uniform across subgroups of interferon gene signature or IFNGS expression, demographics and clinical characteristics, all of which may have the potential to impact disease severity and therapeutic responses in clinical practice. This was a post hoc analysis of pooled data from the randomized, placebo-controlled, double-blind, 52-week TULIP-1 and TULIP-2 trials, which enrolled patients with autoantibody positive, moderate to severe SLE, despite standard therapy. The analysis included patients who received intravenous anifrolumab 300 milligrams or placebo every four weeks for 48 weeks, giving 360 patients in the anifrolumab group and 366 patients in the placebo group. Efficacy and safety endpoints through week 52 were evaluated across predefined patient subgroups. These included IFNGS, high or low, age, sex, BMI, race, geographic region, age of onset, glucocorticoid use, disease activity, and serological markers. PICLA is a validated global measure of treatment response in SLE clinical trials and was the primary endpoint of TULIP2. In the overall pooled TULIP data, 47.5% of patients receiving anifrolumab 300 milligrams obtained a BICLA response at week 52, compared with 30.8% of patients receiving placebo, giving a nominally significant treatment difference of 16.6%. Although some subgroup sizes were small, which limited comparisons, Bickler response treatment differences with anifrolumab versus placebo were generally comparable to the total population across most predefined subgroups, including subgroups of high versus low baseline glucocorticoid dosage and high versus low disease activity assessed using sledi 2 k Subgroups with particularly large treatment differences included IFNGS high patients and patients with abnormal baseline serological markers. Similar trends were seen for sustained oral glucocorticoid tapers, which were defined as a dosage reduction from greater than or equal to 10 milligrams per day at baseline to less than or equal to 7.5 milligrams per day from weeks 40 to 52. Overall, 50.5% of patients receiving anafrolumab 300 milligrams had a sustained oral glucocorticoid taper, compared with 31.8% of patients receiving placebo, giving a nominally significant treatment difference of 18.7%. Treatment differences for sustained oral glucocorticoid tapers were also generally consistent across most predefined subgroups. The treatment differences between anafrolumab and placebo for sustained oral glucocorticoid taper was greater in IFNGS high versus IFNGS low patients. Annualized flare rates were also evaluated. Overall, patients receiving anifrolumab 300 milligrams had a 25% lower likelihood of flares than patients receiving placebo. The rate ratios between treatment groups for annualized flare rate were generally consistent across most of the predefined subgroups. The rate ratios favoured anifrolumab to a greater extent in IFNGS high compared to IFNGS low patients and in patients with abnormal versus normal serological markers at baseline. Overall, anifrolumab was generally well tolerated. 
The safety profile of anepharlium map was similar across most of the predefined subgroups. The rate of serious adverse events was lower for anepharlium map compared with placebo across most of the predefined subgroups. The most common adverse events of special interest in both treatment groups were non-opportunistic serious infections. There was a higher incidence of herpes zoster in patients receiving anephrolumab versus placebo, and herpes zoster incidence was similar in patients with and without an elevated IFNGS and across most of the other subgroups analysed. In conclusion, this pooled analysis of the phase three TULIP-1 and TULIP-2 trials adds to the knowledge of the efficacy and safety of anephrolumab across a range of important clinical and demographic patient subgroups. Some small subgroup sizes limited comparisons. However, treatment differences between anephrolumab and placebo were generally consistent across subgroups, irrespective of baseline oral glucocorticoid dosage or disease activity. The greatest benefits were observed for patients with an elevated interferon gene signature and for those with one or more abnormal baseline serological tests. This is notable since these patients usually have more severe disease and therefore more unmet need. Although further investigations are required to assess treatment benefit for some patient subgroups, this study supports consistent efficacy and safety of anephrolumab across a range of patients with moderate to severe SLE.